Well, I mean, yeah, I, I know it's you, 3PL. I just kind of wondering how you're doing. You don't, you don't look so good. Goodness gracious me. Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean. I've got to rest before I fall apart. My joints are almost frozen. Well, it looks kind of already looks like you're falling apart there. I mean, where's the rest of your body? But. Oh. Well, you know, I'm just kind of calling it like it is. I just wanted to to tell you. Oh, I, I just don't understand human behavior. Well, you know, yeah, you and me both, but you know, it's gonna it's gonna end up okay in the end, right? Hey, come on now. I mean, that's no outlook to have, right? You take good care of yourself. Well, you too. I mean, it looks like you looks like you need a tune up. Hey, everybody. This is Ali from Potent Printables. Um, I just kind of wanted to show you my 3D printed C3PO head. Um, he's very functional. You can see his eyes light up. Um, he talks. He's very portable. Um, so he's a great prop and good for puppeteering. Um, good for cosplay. So I just wanted to uh, make this series of videos to show you how he's built if you want to make one for yourself. So I hope you enjoy and uh, let's get started. So just as an aside, I wanted to share this image of me at The Last Jedi when I went to see it with my wife. Uh, she bought me this awesome Chewbacca jacket. So I was able to play the scene in Empire when Chewbacca is putting together C-3PO and just has his head in his hands. Um, so it was absolutely perfect. And I uh, just wanted to share that with you. And so now let's really get to it. So when I first started this project, I was in a little bit of a time crunch because I wanted to get the whole thing done for when I was going to see The Last Jedi. So I decided to use an existing CAD model for the outside of C-3PO's head. So I started on Thingiverse and I ended up here on this web page. Um, and I found this CAD model which seemed to get good reviews. Um, it had been used by a number of other people for successful builds, which you can see here. It had reasonable documentation in terms of there were pictures labeling what the parts were, where they go. It was already subdivided for smaller 3D printer beds, which is what I have. And um, it was 19 American dollars. And so I decided to give it a chance and it worked out great. I'll put a link to it in the description down below. And now we just have to get printing. So here we can see the CAD of the back of C-3PO's head laid out versus the corresponding 3D printed parts. Now that we have all the little pieces printed out, we have to bond them or glue them together to create the whole head. So next I'm going to show you a demonstration of how each of those joints is bonded together to create a strong final product. So there are quite a number of ways to bond two 3D printed parts together. The way that I've been using is I've been using a two-part epoxy um, applied to the joint and then that lets you um, put the two pieces together and then really fine-tune the alignment. So the epoxy that I've been using is JB Weld Quick Weld. Um, apparently it's the world's strongest bond. It has a six minute set time. And basically what you do is you uh, mix it out and apply it to the joint, squish the two pieces together and you can really fine-tune the alignment so in this example you can get those ridges nice and lined up and the reason I like that is if you have a misalignment otherwise you have to do a lot of sanding to cover up the misalignment or you end up having to just break the bond and start again so here I've already laid out two um, each part of the epoxy it's a one-to-one -one ratio and we just need to make sure that it's very well mixed mixing and mixing and mixing and when it's finally mixed you can then begin to apply it to the joint like we're doing now so we'll apply a nice even layer and once that's fully applied we can then basically start the alignment process And the other great thing about this epoxy is that you can go back later and add more to strengthen the, the bond even further. So here I'm putting the final touches on applying the epoxy. Then we'll put the two pieces together and basically move it around a bit to get the epoxy flowing everywhere so that we have a nice distribution of the, of the epoxy. 
then we can really fine tune the alignment to get those ridges nice and lined up. And then once you're happy with the alignment, you'll basically hold the part until it's relatively cured. Um, a lot of times you don't have to do the full six minutes. Uh, if you can find a place to put it down once it's somewhat hard, you'll be fine. So um, this is just a test piece and I'm gonna put this down now. And I've already done another one that's fully cured. So let me just grab that. And here it is. You can see that it makes us nice bond. And as I was saying earlier, you can always go back and add more, which is oftentimes what I'll do. I'll just kind of get it tacked together and then I'll go back and add a lot more epoxy into the seams. Um, and that makes a real, really super strong bond. So here you can see some of the pieces have been bonded together using the method just described. And now I'm going to work on creating the full back of C-3PO's head. And that process begins with sanding. And I, you start out using a coarse grit, and then I work to a progressively finer grit to get a nice clean edge um, upon which to bond. And periodically I will wash the edge off to get any um, sanding residue off the edge so that when we apply the epoxy, it doesn't weaken the bond. So here you can see I use a toothbrush to kind of scrub that edge. And next we'll start working on some of the accessory parts, sanding those. So here I'm just using progressively finer grits again um, on the accessory parts and just continually sanding and polishing to get rid of the ridges from the FDM printer. Um, it's really important to get rid of those ridges for painting. So here you can see the back half fully bonded together. I've also started using a wood filler to fill in any big voids or seams. And next I'm going to show you um, how I use an orbital sander to really start the big sanding process. And here is the front part of C-3PO's masks all bonded together. And I'm starting out using a very coarse sandpaper with an orbital sander. And this helps get rid of a lot of the major ridge lines and it takes a long time. And this is the bulk of the work. And you can see here that I've greatly sped this video up. Um, but I just wanted to give you an idea of how much time it takes to sand the, this, these 3D prints to get a nice finish. So. All right, so the sanding is, this round of sanding is done, and you can see that I'm still finding some seams that will need wood filler, like you saw with the back half of the mask. So you, here you can see the wood filler has been applied to the front part of C-3PO's mask. Um, it's kind of caked on, so there'll be needing to be more sanding to, to smooth that out. Um, you can also see to the right, the back half has had a layer of primer put on them and that really helps to see the dead spots and where you need to sand more and possibly add more wood filler and um, the accessory parts have also been um, primed and polished and sanded some more so here you can see the front half has been sanded down um, the wood filler looks a lot smoother now it's hiding the the seams and the in the joints so the mask is really starting to look like it should and the back half has had another layer of primer and is looking pretty good. Here we have the front and back primed and sanded some more. You can see that the front is really starting to shake shape. It's looking much smoother and looking like it's ready for some gold paint. Uh, same for the back. You can see the accessories have been primed and sanded more and have one or two layers of gold paint. And that's how we're gonna leave this episode. That's the end of the first part of this series. Uh, hopefully you've enjoyed what you see. And if you're wondering how C-3PO works, I've kind of left that a little bit mysterious. So is it remote control? Is it on a timer? Is it voice recognition? Um, if you want to find out, please check out some of the other videos in the series. And don't forget to subscribe if you like what you see. And I'll see you in the next video. Do take good care of yourself.